Welcome back, nerd friends. We are back at the Nerd Bench with another unboxing, the new Quick Run 10 BL120 G2. We're going to pop this guy open and talk about all of the cool new features. There it is. Ha! Ah, right? So this comes in the uh, the cool blister pack. You get some uh, double side tape, some shrink tubing, zip ties, and this guy is important for usage with your LED program card. It's got new settings, so it comes with a new setting sheet to put on top of your LED program card. It also works with the LCD program box G2, but we'll get into a bunch of that later. So there we have it out of the box, the Quick Run 10BL120 G2. It looks from the outside very much like the previous model. Uh, the sensor plug is a different color on most of the pictures and the samples that I've seen so far. And it does say G2 uh, right there on the corner. But from the outside, it looks very much the same. Still have the big heavy duty wire, the multicolor stuff, uh, dual power cap or dual cap power cap. And the tuning all works through the receiver wire. This guy has a two pin plug. So if you do you do your programming that works through the receiver harness or throttle cable as so well. for tuning or changing speed control settings You can use three different devices to tune this guy uh, The LED program card and like I said, it does come with the sticker that slaps right on there Otherwise, there's a chart in the instruction manual also works with the LCD Program Box Pro. This has Bluetooth built into it. The Quick Run series does not support interface with the app, but it does work with the uh, standalone LCD features that this guy offers. And between all of them, the settings are all the same. It's just a different way to interface it. And it also does uh, set key programming as the instruction manual uh, explains it. The button itself can be used for tuning as well. Uh, we're gonna walk through some of that here in just a second. It is rated for 120 amps with a burst of 760. And again, these are manufacturer's ratings of the components that are used more so than any is what this is going to see in the real world. Um, it does work censored, of course, because it's the censored unit, but like all Hobbywing speed controls, if the sensor wire comes unplugged, it operates sensorless as well, or if you have a sensorless motor, it'll run that A-OK. -okay. Rated for two or three S LiPos, but the caveat there is the turbo features only work on 2S. Uh, a 2S motor limit is going to be a 4.5. The 3S motor limit is a 10.5. Uh, 120G2 has an updated BEC as well. It's a 4 amp switching BEC that does 6 or 7.4 volts for the HV servo. And the fan is now powered by the BEC. So you don't have to swap out the fan if you decide to run higher voltage stuff like the previous model. And as we talked about earlier, the programming does work through the throttle cable here. It's not going to work in that fan port. So you have to have access to the receiver. To right, so that's basically specs and we're going to bust out our best friend in the whole wide world the instruction manual and we are going to have a look here at the programmable items so if you do lose the sticker that comes with it you'll be able to use this as a reference to translate what all the numbers mean with your tuner device uh, running mode is where you can turn the reverse on or put it in the rock crawl mode if you want to Cutoff voltage is for the LiPo protection and you see you have kind of an up and down range as previously we had intermediate high and low. Now they've given you uh, more choices, five different settings for different levels, and you can turn it off as well. The punch is going to be how linear your throttle is. If the throttle feels twitchy or overreactive, you can lower the punch setting to, it'll slow down the response of the speed control to your throttle inputs. And higher is gonna be more linear. If you turn it all the way up, the speed control is gonna do its best to do exactly what your throttle inputs are doing. And number four, drag brake force is the strength of the brakes at neutral so if you want the brakes to come on when you let off the throttle automatically that's what drag brakes does it's brakes at neutral drag brake force typically most most folks run it down at zero but some do like a little bit of decel and if you do set this up in a rock crawler it can be set all the way up as well max brake force is the overall strength of the push brakes so when you go to push on the brakes you can turn that up or down if the brakes are overactive or something like that you can make them a little bit easier to drive uh, max reverse force same thing you can limit the overall reverse force a lot of the times using reverse is a little tricky so you can lower that or make it so you're not going full reverse to full forward type of deal Neutral range is the dead zone between the throttle and the brake or reverse activation. If you feel like when you let off the throttle, it's got brake or the reverse is inconsistent, sometimes opening up that neutral range will help deal with that. Radios have mechanical pots for their throttles and that neutral point can kind of shift around a little bit and cause some problems for the speed control. So neutral range allows you to open up that zone that the speed control sees neutral and makes the drag brake or sometimes the reverse a little bit more consistent. Consistent. 
All right, up next we have Boost and Turbo. Now these are the electronic timing advanced features that the speed control has. It can apply electronic timing to the motor to make it go faster. Boost applies as you apply the throttle, kind of automatically it picks where the loads and everything starts to increase and then it'll apply that through the throttle range. Uh, whereas turbo timing comes on after full throttle and you have a turbo delay of how long after full throttle before that kicks in. And these are all adjustable in amounts of degrees. So the more degrees is the more electronic timing the speed control is adding and that adds on to whatever end bell timing you have. So you have to be very careful when you use this. Typically we recommend not to use it unless you run out of gears or you, you're in a situation where you have a lot of temperature overhead and stuff like that. The motor's not getting hot at all. You can afford to run a little bit more timing from the speed control, electronic timing. And this allows you two different ways to do it. One through the throttle range and then another after you get to full throttle, it'll apply the timing and give you some control over the delay and the amount there as well. But again, the warning here on using the turbo or the boost is be very careful with it. If none of this makes any sense, do a little digging, do a little more research. We have more videos on this stuff to help you understand what it's all doing. But the idea is, is that all these values of timing from the end bell to the boost to the turbo all add together. And they should never be probably above 55-ish degrees to be safe. And don't even use that as your minimum starting point either. Because it depends on the gearing, depends on the motor, depends on a lot of things. So, so be very, very careful. Uh, number 11, the BEC voltage is the strength of the power that it, the speed control puts to the receiver and in voltage. The amps always stay the same, the voltage goes up and down. So if you have HV servos and you want to take advantage of that, you can turn the BEC voltage up. Also makes the fan run a little bit faster, which can be an advantage to cooling. And motor rotation, number 12, this changes the forward direction of the motor. Some vehicles require the motor to run backwards for the tires to drive forward. Motor rotation allows allows you to change that without doing any special wiring or running it sensorless or anything like that. If you ever run into a situation where the motor, where you give it the throttle and the motor runs the wrong direction, first thing, redo the calibration. Uh, next thing is test it again to make sure and then see if your speed control has a motor rotation setting to correct that. If it doesn't and it's a sensor speed control, there's not going to be a workaround. So even with the, with the quick run 120 now, that becoming a little bit more of a frequent need, got to add it in. Let's take a look at LCD Program Box Pro. You use, like we said before, the throttle cable, the receiver harness. It plugs into the side that says e ESC. Uh, S is the white wire for signal. That goes in right there. I have this hooked up to a battery on some alligator clips up there. Flip the switch on, that comes on, we get the auto boot, and then to jump in, you see the parameters right there for the speed control. A little race car goes across the string, and we get to our settings. And I love the new scroll wheel on this guy. You can kind of flip through everything real quickly, and then it rolls back around the top, and you got a status bar on the side to show you all that. So just some basic stuff here on the usage uh, to cover some basics as we went over all the settings. If you want to make a setting change, you tap on the down wheel, it goes in, and you can make your selection and tap it again to select it, and then hit save to save it to the speed control. Then you can back out with the bottom button and away you go, and you see that saves in there. So we're going to jump back in there and put that back to normal. And the another note is the highlighted setting with the little asterisk lets you know that that is the default setting. So if you don't want to do a reset. And then let's say you make a bunch of changes and you're not happy with all of that and you want to go back to factory. Uh, you can use the any of the programmers to do that. And there is a reset down at the bottom and that will reset everything for you. Get your reload. But just a note, make sure that you use the save button when you're making your setting changes so that it actually down or puts it into the speed control. Basic calibration process so the speed control can learn the outputs of the radio. It has to learn the neutral, the throttle, and the reverse output. Otherwise, it won't know what's doing. Something that a lot of people overlook. So make sure that if you're having any operational problems, you just try to redo the calibration. You can never really over calibrate a speed control. If you do run into any problems, check your radio's output. A lot of times, neutral will shift around. You'll get the brakes turned down or the reverse turned down by accident in the radio. All sorts of goofy stuff. And if all that looks okay, try to reverse the throttle channel and start the process over just in case. Calibration process starts with a long press and hold of the button. You switch on the speed control, it starts to blink, you let go. Uh, you can then tap new to set neutral, hold it full throttle, tap again, hold it full reverse, tap again. Blinks once, twice, three times as you go through that process and then it is ready to go. And you get a no light at neutral. As you apply throttle, you get a red light and as you get to full throttle, you'll get a green light on as well and reverse is much the same. The only difference is, is because it's defaulted to not full reverse power, it doesn't show you the full reverse green color. 
But that is basic calibration of just about any hobby wing speed control for the most Let's part. Let's run through the onboard programming. It's explained very well right here, but why don't I just show you? One thing that you have to keep in mind before you get into this is the blinking sequence. There are short blinks or beeps and long blinks or beeps. If you have a motor connected, the beeping will come out of the motor. The tones that get generated by electronic speed control actually come out of the motor, not out of the speed control. So if the motor's not hooked up, you won't get to hear the cool beeping. But the short blinks are count as a one and the long blink counts as a five. That way we don't have to count so many blinks when we get into double digits. So it'll blink four times rapidly to show four and then one long blink for the Five. We're going to show you that all now. So in a long press and hold the button, turn the speed control on. It's going to blink for the calibration. You keep holding it and then we get into our settings. One blink for the first setting, two blinks, that's three, that's four. This is a five with a long blink. There you go. And this is what six looks like. A long and a short. Now, so now that we know how that works, let's go in and make a simple change so we can show everybody how that works. Uh, we'll do running mode because it's first up in the lineup. And let's say we want to turn the reverse off. It's pretty straightforward. Long press and hold. Beeping. When we get in there now, it's going to blink once you let go. It's on setting number two right now. If we tap the button, it goes to setting number three. Uh, we tap the button again. We'll let it blink again. Tap the button again. That's setting number one. That's what we want. We're on setting number one. We can wait to confirm. We got it. We turn the switch P control off. We turn it back on. And our setting has been saved. And now, no matter what, we no longer have reverse. So, confirmation. So that's how the onboard programming works, and that's kind of the same across the board if you have a quick run speed control that does feature onboard tuning with the set button and the light. That is kind of how it all works. So we're going to jump in with the LED program card and turn the boost off, because the speed control will blink when there is no timing on. So when there's zero electronic timing, that's something in normal, I guess, sanctioned racing called blinky racing, and some folks are using these for local racing. While this is not Aurora-approved speed control, it does follow the guidelines that when the timing's turned off, the light will blink. So I'll show you that here real quick. Jump in there, turn that on. It takes a moment to boot. We're gonna go over to setting number eight. I'm gonna change the value to number one, because that is the zero. We hit save, we turn it off, we unplug. And now, with this guy, Plugged in, we're going to set it up like we're going to drive it, of course. Turn my radio on. Turn the speed control on. And now we get a blinking red light at neutral. The speed control still works correctly. It still does all the same other lights, but the only difference is at neutral, the light's going to blink so that it looks like it's in the blinky mode. It's not... Like I said, it's not Aurora proof speed control. We don't send the quick run series in for certification, but trust us, these are legit speed controls that have zero timing in them. And we wouldn't mess around with stuff like that, folks. I hope you enjoyed this look at the quick run 10BL120 G2 censored speed control, the latest addition to the Hobbywing quick run series. Don't forget, we also do a podcast. It's called RC Stuff, powered by Hobbywing. Look it up on your favorite podcast service. We give away a free Hobbywing combo each and every episode. All you have to do to enter to win is listen to an episode. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. As always, folks, thanks for watching another episode of The Charlie Show, new every Tuesday right here on the Hobbywing official YouTube channel. We will see you all next time.